want to do a study in Romans 6, verses 3 through 4. Now, uh, the, I had a discussion on baptism, and this uh, chapter came up, and there seemed to be some confusion on what baptism is being talked about here. And we read in uh, verses 3 through 4, Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Now, the baptism that is spoken of here in verse 3 it has nothing to do with water baptism. And that is basically where the confusion comes in. Because many people look upon this as talking about being water baptized into Christ. And from that, from this passage, they get the illustration of immersion. Now, the mode of baptism is not being given here. Given here. And water baptism is not being spoken of here. The baptism that is spoken of in uh, verse 3 is actually the baptism of the Spirit. And that has to do with uh, being born from above, being regenerated. It is a baptism that God performs within our heart. It's the application of the death of Christ to us personally. Now, we can see this, for example, uh, right at the end of verse 4. It says that uh, even so, we should walk in newness of life. When we are regenerated, we walk in newness of life. Now, uh, there's another passage that also talks about this baptism. And it, too, is commonly misunderstood. And that's found in Acts 2. Verse 38, Acts 2, and now I didn't uh, put a page marker for me here, so now it's going to take me, I uh, have to flip a few pages to find it. Okay, uh, chapter 2, verse 38, this is Acts 2, verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, we have to read the Bible carefully, uh, because if we don't, we're going to come up with wrong ideas. And if we read this carefully, we see that it says to be baptized for the remission of sins. And we cannot take away our sins by being baptized in water. All right, water does not take away our sins. It is the application uh, by the Spirit in the new birth that takes away or washes away our sins. And baptism, by the way, is associated with washing in the Bible. Like uh, Mark 7, verse 4, for example, the washing of pots and pans and tables and such. But uh, the baptism here is that of the new birth. And it has nothing to do with being water baptized. It's actually a command to be saved, but it's, it's a command that God has to perform. Now we read of this uh, also in Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36, starting at verse 25, verses 25 through 27, notice the language here. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new heart will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You see, Ezekiel 36 here is talking about the new birth. It's talking about regeneration. It's talking about the baptism that God performs within our heart. And notice that um, he says, for example, 
I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Is that not repentance? It's just another way of saying repentance, right? If you're doing God's will, if you're obeying his statutes and judgments, then you are repenting. You are turning away from your sins. And this is what we read in Acts 2, right? Acts 2.38 said to repent. You see? So we see that repentance, the actions that we are doing, are actually passive. God is the one who is performing this work in us. And God is the one who is performing the baptism in us. We see this here in Ezekiel 36. Notice the personal pronouns. It says, then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And uh, and from all your filthiness, from, from all, all your idols, will I cleanse you. And a new heart also will I give you. You see, the giving of a new heart, putting a new spirit within us, has to do with regeneration. And this is a baptism that God is performing. You see? Now we read in um, in Titus, and uh, Titus uh, three five will help us bring this together. It will um, it's very clear language that will help us. And we read in uh, I'm going to read through uh, verses five through six. Matter of fact, I'll read verse seven also. Uh, not a, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now that's the baptism you see that Ezekiel thirty six is talking about, and this is through Jesus Christ. Notice verse six, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Well, how did Jesus Christ become our Savior? He died, right? That verse is often mis, mis, uh, overlooked because the new birth would not be possible unless Christ justified us. You see, Christ had to die. That makes the giving of the righteousness of Christ to us personally possible. In verse 7, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You see, there it is. So it's through the death of Christ that the new birth is possible. So when we are baptized by the Spirit, we are baptized into Jesus Christ. We are baptized into his death. You see, now you understand what John, rather Romans 6 verse 3 is saying now? Let's get back to Romans. Actually, there's one more. I want to look at one more passage. I almost forgot it. And that's in Colossians. Colossians 2, verse 11 through 12. In whom also we are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now, the circumcision of Christ is the fact that he died. He was cut off for us. He was cut off for our sins. And, but the circumcision made without hands is the circumcision that God performed in our heart. You see? And then verse 12, we see that um, circumcision is, the, is synonymous with baptism. It's just God is just speaking of it with a different sign. All right? Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith and operation of God, who raised him up from the dead. See, the buried with him in baptism is the fact that we died in Christ. All right? That's the same as being circum the circumcision of Christ. It means the same thing. And so the circumcision made without hands is also synonymous with the new birth, you see. And our actions are passive in all this. We, we are not the motivating factor here. We are, not, we are not doing this. It's actually through the faith and operation of God. It says it right here, faith and operation of God. Not even our faith, all right? It's Christ's faith, all right? Now, when we have, um, there's one more passage, because it's interesting, and I want to look at it, and that's in Matthew 3, 
verse 11 here, the John, here John the Baptist is speaking of the baptism that we re, will receive through Jesus Christ. Remember Titus 3, verse 6, that he said abundantly through Jesus Christ. Um, verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that committeth cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now remember, uh, we the baptism of the Spirit is the application of the death of Christ. All right, it's a baptism that the Spirit performs, as we're seeing here. But if we turn to First um, Peter three, uh, verse twenty-one, this is First Peter three twenty-one. We read, "The like figure wherein unto even baptism doth also now save us." Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, see that? But of the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, every word in the Bible is important, and many people overlook the simple language of this. It says, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is, it's not through water baptism. Water baptism just cleans away the filth of the flesh. It doesn't take away your sins. It, it, the only way we get a good conscience is through the death of Christ. It's through justification. All right. So that is what is being typified in uh, Matthew 3, verse 11, as by fire. We are baptized by fire. All right. It has to do with the judgment of God on our sins. But Christ is the one who endured that. All right. Now, uh, back to Romans 6. Let's go back to Romans 6. And uh, verse, verse 3 through 4. Uh, we read, Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Now, his death, the death of Christ is also a baptism. And this is the baptism that verse 4 is getting into now. Therefore, we are, and it should be noted, because I think I forgot to mention it. Uh, remember, we were not, uh, we cannot be water baptized for the remission of sins. Right? Water does not take away our sins. And in here, too, if you notice, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. Now, water baptism does not baptize us into Jesus Christ or into the death of Christ. Water baptism is just simply a sign and in no way imparts that kind of grace to us. It's really not a sacrament. All right, it's just that water baptism is not a sacrament. And, uh, and so by careful reading of the language, we should begin to notice that water baptism is not in view here. What baptizes us into Jesus Christ, into the death of Christ, is the baptism of the Spirit. It's the, Spirit, it's the baptism that God performs in our heart, as we read in Ezekiel 36, remember? Now, uh, we read here that it speaks here of the baptism of Jesus Christ into death, or um, Jesus Christ were baptized into his death, all right? And that, too, is a baptism that uh, we read in uh, verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. And that had to do with the new birth. But the being buried with him in baptism uh, is the fact that we died in Christ. Now, to understand this a little better, we could say it this way, that Christ died as our substitute. All right, now we start to maybe see that a little better now. When Christ died, we died. All right, because he died in our place. We read, for example, in Romans 6, verse 8. Now, if ye be dead with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. See, uh, we have died in Christ because he died as our substitute. All right. And also Colossians 
um, Colossians uh, 3, verse 3, we also read the same thing. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. All right? We died in him. When Christ died, we died. In that sense, we were baptized. We were baptized into death, if you will. Um, now, um, when, when we read there, therefore, that we are baptized into death, that's referring to the application of that to us in the new birth. All right. And we reread of the being baptized in, into the death of Christ or buried with him. It's not the illusion of or the illustration of immersion. That's not in view. It's talking about death, that we died in him. It's talking about being dead and resurrected. All right. But the idea that um, immersion is being uh, eluded there is not really uh, being seen here. As a matter of fact, as we saw in Ezekiel 36, the illustration was sprinkling, right? It said, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. That's the illustration. That sprinkling is actually associated with the word baptism, baptizo, because that's the word that's used in Acts 2.38. So um, it's not my intent to, to get into the um, the whole argument of, immersion versus sprinkling but the fact is that Romans 6 is not talking about water baptism and it's not giving us a mode for baptism I spoke speaking of the new birth and it's speaking of the fact that we died in Christ 